This is Ken Loomer and I'm going to be showing you my fully restored Gene Krupa Slingelin Radial King snare drum from 1938. And the story behind this snare drum is I found it in my garage while I was cleaning it out. I must have gotten this from a friend of mine at least 15 years ago. And the snare drum was in very bad shape. All the lugs were damaged. And of course the pearl covering was in very bad shape. And it was missing a lot of the uh, parts like the uh, Radio King strainer. But once I examined the drum and I looked at the shell it was in absolutely perfect shape. Of, of course, back in 1938, the only size Slingelin uh, Radio King was a 6.5 by 14, which Gene Krupa used first back in 1936. So let me show you uh, some of this uh, restored work. What I wanted to do was I wanted to make this into a player's drum. Of course, if you were a collector, you would never uh, take off uh, any of the pearl or parts, no matter how bad, badly it was damaged. But I wanted to fix it up to make it look like brand new as Gene Krupa would have gotten it back in 1938. So let's take a close look at this snare drum right here. What I had to do is I had to find all the new old stock slingling parts which I did. A friend of mine actually had some of the uh, Radio King strainer parts that the Slingling Gibson era made during the early 2000s. So I was able to get all those parts and he even had the original Slingling Marine Pearl. So I got that and then it was me restoring this to make it look brand new again. So let's first look at the cloud badge. So, and this is the original cloud badge from this snare drum. As you can see right here, it's Slingling Quality Drums, Chicago, Illinois, USA. And of course, that's where the Slingling factory was back in the 30s in Chicago. And it's a beautiful brass cloud badge. So once I got all the parts, I put it together. Of course, the first thing I had to do was I had to take out the old pearl. And let me show you the old original pearl right over here. This is it right here. As you can see, it's very badly yellowed. And right there you can see where the cloud badge used to be and the lugs. And you can see cracks in the pearl. And don't forget, this drum is 1938, so it's 82 years old. And there's the original pearl, which I took off. And of course, I restored it with this brand new Slingelin Marine Pearl from the Gibson Slingelin era. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's, it has, the, uh, of course, the blue tint to it, the big uh, pattern. And it's absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, I restored all the stream-like uh, Radio King lugs. These are all new old stock parts. And let's, let's go back so you can see the butt end. This is a new old stock Gibson Air Radio King butt end right here. And of course you got to have the, the straight edge stick chopper hoops, which I found, new old stock. And of course this is the Radio King strainer, very famous for their Slingelin Radio King drum. And I wanted to make this as a tribute to the great Gene Krupa. 
and I wanted this snare drum exactly as Gene Krupa would have had back in 1938. Now as you can see over here normally there would be a tone control right over here but Gene Krupa did not like any type of muffler or tone control on his snare drum or any of his drums back in 1938. So let me show you the original tone control that I took out of his drum and I doing some research I learned a lot about how to date this Radio King drum. As you can see the uh, tone control muffler has washers on them and they only use the washers from 1936 to 1940. You can see it even has the stamp on it, Chicago, Illinois, and Slingerland. And right here, as you can see, it has the, it was like red pads on the muffler. And these were very well made, it's very heavy duty. But the best way to really date it, that it was in the 30s, by looking at the knob here. If the knob had a flat head on it, they were made in the 30s, right here. Now in the 40s, the knob it had a curve. Right here, as you can, this part here, on the head, it, it would have a curve. But since this is a flat head, this drum was definitely made in the 30s. So I'm dating this to 1938. And here's a picture I, I took of Gene Krupa when he left Benny Goodman in January of 1938 then he formed his own big band and this is a 1938 picture of Gene Krupa with his big band from one of the movies he made and here is a, of course that six and a half by 14 inch Radio King snare drum you can see the Radio King snare drum, you can see the cloud badge, and of course no muffler on it. And how about those hi-hats? Those are Zildjian 11 inch. So Gene Krupa insisted on no tone controls on any of his drums. So you can see on the small top there's no tone control, which usually would be near the front. And of course none on the snare drum. And right here is a page I took out of the 1936 Slingerland catalog, the first year that the Gene Krupa model Radio King snare drum was made. And as you can see right here, that's where the tone control would be, but of course Gene did not like it. So when Slingerland made the snare drum for him, no tone control. And that's why on my snare drum, my tribute snare drum, I took it off. And as you can see right here, they only made a 6.5 by 14 inch model. And it was chrome plated. That was one of the big features. And it said $50. But $50 in 1938 compared to 2020 money is about 800 bucks. So this was a very expensive snare drum back in 1938. Of course, it was the top of the line, and it was the best-selling snare drum during that era. Now, during the 40s, Slingland started making different sizes. This is a page taken from the a 1940s Slingland catalog. And as you can see, they started making a 5.5 by 14, six and a half by 14, seven by 14, and even an eight by 14. And you had your choice of either the nickel hardware, which was less expensive, or the chrome. Now, starting in 1940s, when Gene Krupa, as it says right here, this Krupa model snare drum is a drum which is used by Gene Krupa with his big band and his famous trio. Gene uses the five and a half by 14 inch size, which in 1940 on 
was the only size snare drum Gene would use. But from 1936 to 1939, Gene used the 6.5 by 14 because it was the only size they made. And let me show you this great picture of me with Gene Krupa. This is from 1971. As you can see, Gene Krupa's got his arm around me. How cool is that? It's the first time I saw Gene Krupa back in 1971. And the guy was so nice to me. He was unbelievable. Of course, I had him autograph. I had this piece of paper with me. He autographed this. And this is another picture of me in Gene Krupa. And that's my brother on the left, and that's me. And this is from 1972. Now let me tell you a story about 1971, when Gene Krupa came over to my table, and Gene just got through playing the song Cute with his brushes, and I told Gene, man, I just love your brush playing. And uh, I told him, I says, I don't own a, a pair of brushes. I says, what kind of brushes do you play? And of course, Gene told me, well, Slingley makes a model of brushes, the Gene Krupa model. And uh, he said, you don't own a, por a pair of brushes? So he got off the table. He went over to his bass drum. He grabbed his brushes. And here it is. <laughs> he actually gave me his brushes from 1971 so these brushes are 49 years old I mean what a guy and I'm gonna be using these brushes on this tribute Gene Krupa Radio King snare drum I'll play it I'll use it and I'm gonna be using these sticks when I give you the sound demo these are Slingelin Gene Krupa model sticks and there's a, you see Gene Krupa's signature. And these are sort of like a 5A model with the acorn tips. I've never played these sticks on a snare drum. Cause, and here are the original bag that it came in. Of course, it's Slingelin and it's Hickory. And it's made at the famous Niles factory in Illinois and like I said on this uh, snare drum right over here I use all new old stock parts you know the uh, streamlined lugs Radio King lugs and of course the the famous Radio King strainer the straight edge hoops and even the snappy snares underneath I happen to have one right here. Here's the original sleeve box that it came in. And Gene actually, he liked the 13 inch wires better than the 16 inch because these Radio King, you could actually use a 16 inch. So it goes completely across the drum. Gene Krupa, he liked no tone control and he liked the 13 inch snappy snares better. So I wanted to make sure that I have the exact same equipment that Buddy, that Gene Krupa would use way back in 1938. And there I am with Gene Krupa. And of course, his best friend, I might as well show you this picture, is me with Buddy Rich. And this happened to be 1970. And he's autographing the Super Drummer book for me. And of course, this is the famous picture that was in the uh, Slingland advertisement of Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich. And of course, you can see that Slingland drum set Gene Krupa model right over here. I might as well show you this picture here of me and Buddy Rich. And the time I got a drum lesson from Buddy Rich and he let me play his drum set. 
So a lot of history just in these two pages of photographs. But it was an honor for me to actually see Gene Grupa perform and to actually meet and talk with this legend because every drummer owes a lot to Gene Krupa. He was the man who started it all. He was an incredible musician, drummer. And I'm so happy that I was able to get this Radio King snare drum and fully restore it to new condition. So I'm going to take this off the stand so you can see the inside of the shell. So let's take a look at this. Uh, and right here is the inside of the shell. This is a solid maple shell which Slingerland was famous for. And the solid maple reinforcement rings, top and bottom. And the condition is absolutely perfect. As you, as you can see. And there's that snappy snare that I put on, new old stock. But the inside is absolutely perfect. So let me put the snare drum back on the stand. All right. And what I did was I used a fiber skin drum head, which is sort of like a simulated calf head. Now this particular model is called the Weather King Classic. And the advantage of using this, snare, this particular drum head, it is slightly bigger than normal because when I put a normal uh, ambassador head, it fit tight. It was a tight fit. But with this particular model, what they did was the aluminum ring that they mount the head, they made it smaller. So by using this particular head, it fits a lot better. And this is the, uh, the original Remo logo of the 50s, right here. And it's a diplomat fiber skin. And it simulates the calf head, of course, is what they used on the original Splingland Gene Krupa model Radio King snare drum. So, uh, let me, uh, I'm going to put this uh, camera on the tripod and I'm going to play the snare drum so you can hear it. Let me put it over here. And let me fix this here. Okay, and I'm going to grab Okay, this is fine. I'm going to grab the Gene Krupa Slingeland drumsticks. All right. So I got the Gene Krupa drumsticks. So let me play this snare drum so you can actually hear it. shots and with these uh, stick chopper hoops I mean they have incredible rim shots which Gene Krupa was famous for <laughs> inch Gene Krupa Slingling Radio King snare.
some of the Jean Krupa technique and style, which he was of course famous for, those rim shots and the cross sticking. <laughs> that he gave me. Here they are, Slingeland model Gene Krupa brushes that he gave me back in 1971. They're 49 years old. You know, the rubber is a little bit uh, dry on it, a little brittle, so I have to be careful. So here we go. skin heads and beautiful for brush work. All right. So let me take this uh, camera off the tripod and give you one good look at this fully restored Gene Krupa Slingelin 1938 Radio King snare drum. And I just absolutely love these cloud badges. Of course, this is the original one right off the drum. Of course, it's made in Chicago. And of course, that marine pearl. New old stock. Everything is new old stock parts. So I just wanted to do us a tribute to the great Gene Krupa and fully restore the snare drum which I found in my garage it's been in my garage at least 15 years and like I said the shell is in absolute perfect shape and I'll be making another video later on with this snare drum using my complete drum set so I hope you enjoyed a little bit of history of this snare drum. Of course, the most important part of the snare drum is the shell, which was in absolute perfect condition. They put a little bit of varnish back then, solid maple shell, and the sound, as you can hear, is absolutely incredible. So hopefully, I'll be using this snare drum soon on some of my gigs. And this is my tribute to the great Gene Krupa and his famous Gene Krupa model Radio King snare drum. So this is Ken Lambert saying goodbye and happy drumming.